So welcome to the podcast, Christian. Thanks for coming uh, coming on today. Um, we met in a room in Clubhouse on the new social media app, so I'm excited to hear your thoughts on uh, on where you think Clubhouse will go, and especially for your industry as well. Um, so thanks for joining me today. So can you just give us a little bit of an overview of, of where it all kind of began in the music scene for yourself? I, I mean, I'm a musician. I've been doing this professionally since like 97. Um, I'm part of the band BB Mac, you know, we're a multi, multi-platinum selling band. Um, I've travelled all over the world, music's taken me everywhere. I've had some, uh, you know, I've had a lot of big hits with people like Tiesto, Armin van Buren, BT in the electronic world as well. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing music for over 20 years now and it's just, uh, yeah, it's a passion of mine. And, it, you know, it's not been with its, it's not all ups, but it's not all downs. Definitely been, a, you know, a roller coaster of emotions, um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. And where did it kind of all be all begin for yourself? Have you always been quite a musical background? Was it in you from a young age? And, and then when did you first get your glimpse of real kind of stardom, if you like? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, look, I was oh, as a child, you know, my, my mother and father are both musicians. Um, so I was always surrounded by music from a very early age. I just remember my dad always having an acoustic, acoustic guitar in his hand and just playing around the house and they'd be having band rehearsals and you know so I was I was I was surrounded by music um, my whole life um, growing up you know uh, my dad was in a, in a band in the 60s called The Signs and they were signed to Decca Records and they were in the whole Mersey Beat scene you know playing the Cavern Club you know the Beatles and all that stuff and yeah. you know so I think um, I think my you know my dad moved into kind of more cabaret with my mum in the 80s so I think that definitely had a big effect on me um, I loved yeah. music. I started my first band when I was about twelve, and we used to just we used to just do Beatles covers. That was it. We were, it. we were called No Exit. We loved it though. We used to do a, few, do a few of our own songs as well. They weren't very really good, but you know it was the beginning of a journey for me. And yeah, um, I, I guess my my main my first glimmer of like proper success was with my two um, bandmates Mark and Steve, Mark Barry and Steve McNally, um, as part of BB Mac. And uh, yeah, you know, it all kicked started when we got together in 97 and we, we had a really big hit in 2000 after, you know, working very, very hard and uh, writing lots of songs and, you know, getting a record deal. Um, we, uh, we had our first big hit, which was back here. And, you know, it went to, it was number one for 12 weeks on the AC, the Billboard AC chart in America. It was number one in Japan. It was number one in a few other countries. And it was just, yeah, it propelled it propelled me into that world. I mean, it, you know, I make it sound like it was easy. We just got a record deal. It, it, it wasn't the easiest of things. Um, but, you know, that was, that was the first real success I had in the music industry. And when you found that success, um, how did you feel and change? Like, did anything change about the band, change about yourself? Um, you know, you always hear people saying, oh, they've, they've changed through success. Did you feel you guys change? Were you always the same band? How did it feel when you first got that number one and that success? It's, yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, the whole, that whole period of my career, it's, it's, it was, we were so busy. We were so busy. Um, it, it was all a bit of a blur. But no, we never changed. You know, we didn't change. Um, we were still the same lads, still three Northerners, you know, um, uh, who worked really hard and loved music. Um, I, th- I think after a while, you kind of, it's its weird. It's like when you get these things, you know, we were on like the Jay Leno show and we were touring with Britney Spears and then Sync and we were selling out our own tours and it, it was crazy. But when you get to that point and it, it's just kind of... Um, you just get up and do it and every day is that busy you don't really have time to, to stop and analyze it you know and that's a good thing and also you know a bad thing you don't take the time to to kind of just chill out and relax a bit and I think you know it took us it took its toll especially on me after three years of constant touring and you know physical and mentally it was it was straining you know it was really straining. Did you enjoy the ride? Looking back now, do you think, did you enjoy the, you know, Jay Leno, Britney Spears, NSYNC, you know, massive, massive names. Looking back, did you enjoy the time? Were you present in the moment? You know what? I think, I mean, we enjoyed it, but it was like, like I just said, it was kind of, 
we weren't didn't take a step back and look at what we'd achieved or you know or just like take it all in really it was just go 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 I mean we did we were doing like I think one year we did like 220 flights in a year you know we were literally dotting all over the world because we had a lot of success in Southeast Asia as well so we were constantly going back to Japan coming back to America and then trying to see family for a bit and do stuff in the UK as well so it was just a really crazy time um you know we often say we can't, we can't remember much about it really it was yeah, just yeah. Like a blur because it was really concentrated you know we took a we took a break in 2003 we took a 15 year break <laughs> that's a long break <laughs> but we took a break in 2003 and it was only like a few years after that we started to like you know we be you know be aware and realize and and take a look step step back and look at it um, because at the time it was it, like I say, it was really condensed into this, you know, 2000, 2001 for three years, it was just whirlwind, you know, it was crazy. What do you think? Um, giving advice now for people who want to get into the music scene and, and what you've learned, everyone wants to be that famous band, they want a record deal. What kind of advice would you give to people now who are coming into the music scene on getting their first record deal? making it big what 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 did you take for it from it yeah i mean it's a very different time to when i started and going to music you know when i first got into music in like late 90s you know the only way you could be successful really was by getting a record deal by getting in magazines being on these huge tv shows going on top of the pops going on the jay leno show and these were the only things you could do getting on the radio um and that was it really, you know, there was no other options um, apart from going out and busking in the street. But um, I, I'd say, I'd say, you know, to anyone wanting to get into it, yes, it's a tough business. And yes, there are a lot of people out there, um, you know, doing music, trying to, you know, on their musical journey. But it's also a very, very exciting time for musicians because no longer um, do the, the labels and have, have that, monopoly of that's it it's our way or the highway there's so many different routes for independent artists now to you know and it depends what what do you define as success you know uh, is success and a hundred thousand pounds a year of, of doing something you love I would say yes do you know what I mean is success having a number one yes but people have different levels of success and I think it's very important to, for people to define that because it's so exciting at the moment. There are ways and things you can do to have a successful career in music. And that might not necessarily mean being number one on the billboard chart. Um, let me just turn this off. So, you know, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot more exciting opportunities. Um, you know, social media being one of them. It's an amazing thing to kind of get your message out there. And share your music so i think it's an exciting time but one thing i will say if you if you do want to go without you know, knocking on labels and knocking on doors it's a tough business and you know be ready for some rejection definitely i mean even now at my point in my career you know you you can't get it right every single time you know you kind of apply some songs you go on for for different tv shows and they might get knocked back but it doesn't mean it's the it's a it's not the right so it's a bad song because how about that happen? And then the song gets used on a different show, which just means that person in particular didn't like that song or it wasn't right. Yeah. So, you know, just, just you've got to remember that. It's like, just keep going. Every no, every rejection is just one no closer to you to a yes. So I'd say just keep, you know, you've got to have that mindset. That is, if you want to go in the music, in music industry and you want to, I'm going to go and get myself a deal, you know, it just, it's, it's a lot of it's numbers game and resilience and consistency, consistency. You know, getting up every day and doing one little step towards that goal. Yeah. What fascinates me as well is, um, you know, you watch all of these programs, X Factor, The Voice and all of these. And, you know, more The Voice is there's some brilliant singers come on The Voice and, and don't get a chair turn. And, and, you know, that's it for them. And, you know, me and my wife always talk about, like, how many good singers, really good singers are there in the world? And what is the difference between being a brilliant singer and then becoming a star, you know, being able to sing like Adele, but then actually living the life that Adele has lived. Like, what is it? What is that little bit that that transforms you into the, the mega star? I think, you know, it's a, it, it could be a few things. I think one of them is, is, is mindset. 
it's definitely mindset and confidence. Um, but you know, that's not enough. You know, if you you can have um, the biggest, greatest singer in the world, you know, but if you're not prepared to do the work and do the other stuff that goes along with it, like the social media and the posts and getting yourself out there, um, then no one will know about you. Cause you know, there's so much noise out there. You've got to cut through these days. You know, it's not enough to be talented. You know, I'm sorry to say that, but it's the truth. It's not enough just to have a great voice and think, oh, listen, everyone's just going to come. I'll build this and they'll come from everywhere and it'll just be great. It doesn't work like that, you know. So someone maybe with, with not as much talent who works harder, probably do better than, than you, you know. I mean, that's the story. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's not looking at it as just like that um, because the more you can do yourself on the business side and, you know, connect with the fans and find your tribe, the better and they're the ones who will help you get the word out you know and then you know sometimes you need to be in the right time at the right place but put yourself in lots of places to give yourself more of an option yeah you know it's like um, think- my dad always says to me uh, what was the saying he said well, you know luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity so just Brilliant. always be ready you know ready uh, and you, you can make your own look absolutely and social media plays a big part in in modern day. You know, as I say, we're we're doing this podcast now because we met on a brand new social media platform called Clubhouse, where there's loads of different singers, entrepreneurs, business owners, a full cross section coming together, and it's all audio based, talk and rooms and things like that. But then you've got somebody like um, I think her name's that Ali Sherlock, I believe. She's she was a busker. She filmed herself busking on YouTube in 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 Dublin, and now yeah. she's got like two three million subscribers on YouTube. She's got a, a supporters program on Facebook where she can be paid regularly monthly from her fans to to produce content. And you know she's never had a record deal. I've never heard her on Radio One or or Capital or wherever, but yet she's producing music to millions of people and making money and found her niche. So like. You're right. The conventional way of going to a record deal is probably not there as much anymore, is it? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I mean, this podcast we're doing right now, you know, this is marketing. This is getting my message out. This is you getting your message out. There is so many different other avenues you can use now with social media. I mean, look at it this way. If you if you were to find your tribe, because I believe, you know, you don't have to do whatever music you think oh, I must do this music because it's popular. No, do your music, find your niche and then find your people because they're out there. You know, they're out there. We, we all don't like the same music. If, if we all like the same music, no, no. the world would be a very, very boring place. Let me tell you. So, you know, look at it this way. If you find a thousand engaged fans, just 1000 and, you know, over the course of a year, you know, you release some limited edition vinyl, You've got some music, a little couple of online concerts because real concerts aren't happening anymore. You know, you've got a few T-shirts. Imagine if you get this these 1,000 fans to spend $100 on your products over the year. You know, there's 100 grand, you know, off 1,000 engaged fans. So, you know, it is it is doable to make a career out of music. Um, and there, like I say, there are so many different options now. Um, you know, and I think it comes down to the main thing, what you should be doing is uh, is focusing on building your email list. You know, that that's going to be something that no one can take away from you. You know, you've got followers on TikTok, followers on Facebook, whatever, but get your own email list. That That's your that's your kind of business right there. That's the core of it. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a, you're not the first person to say this. Um, I don't know if you've heard of James Smith, the PT, the influencer, wrote a couple of books and, you know, he's got hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. And someone asked him, what would you do if Instagram took away Instagram? How would you still operate? And he says, I operate off my email marketing list, not my Instagram followers. And, you know, he uses Instagram as a tool to drive people towards yeah. an email marketing list, doesn't he? So um, I think that's a great bit of advice. In terms of, you know, going back to back in the day, you, you two room with Britney Spears. How did that come about? How did you end up on two with Britney Spears and and yeah. and? Um, yeah, well, I mean, we you know we went over and we were signed to because uh, originally we signed in '98, I think, with Telstar Records in the UK, um, and then we 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 did another deal with Hollywood Records, it's owned by Disney, and you know the first single really blew up, so we were getting to work with these amazing huge artists then. So yeah, we toured with Britney. We did the whole. Um, Oops, I did it again tour with her um, all across America. 
And, you know, the year later we did the NSYNC pop tour, which was just incredible as well. So it really, you know, having that first sing, the first single being so big opened up a lot of doors for us as far as, you know, getting to work with other people and, um, you know, uh, getting get, getting on the bill with people like Aerosmith and, you know, all these other huge American bands. So, yeah, it was it was amazing. Do you almost feel looking back now after a 15 year break, like you've lived two lives and what you're you're on with now do you think you know Aerosmith, NSYNC, Britney Spears you know blown up a, uh, you know a couple of years of just constantly flying and then where you are today do you think like it's almost like two different lives you've lived? Uh, yeah do you know what in some ways um, I mean I'll tell you a little story about my transition um, from BB Mac to what I do now I mean we, we, we me and the boys are back making music again actually we, we, we um, did our first album in 15 years last year um, so that's been amazing to, to get back with the boys. You know, we were going to do some gigs last year, but they, they all got pulled. But yeah, um, that's amazing. But yeah, when, when, I, when, I, uh, when we split in 2003, it was, uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I, I was really feeling it mentally. I went through a real dark patch in my, uh, my own personal life where I was having these panic attacks and anxiety and all this depression, um, crippling depression it was awful and you know I uh, I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning um this was this was just like a real dark time for me and something I'd never ever felt before you know and on paper I had money in the bank I had you know Porsche on the drive nice house girls you know trying to get... I was like <laughs> right baby this guy's got it all what's wrong Christian and this is what was freaking me out because for the first time in my life I didn't feel in control and um <clears throat> you know it was really scary to the point where, um, you know, I, I couldn't really go out and social socialising. I'm quite an out. If you if you know me, you know I, I'm quite a sociable person. You know, <clears throat> I'm not shy at all. Um, but this this was really, you know, I was a bit of a wreck. It was like, you know, it, I was just like really scared, really. So, um, I decided, <clears throat> and the reason I'm telling you this because I think this could help. You know, even if it helps one person, it's yeah. worth me telling this story. You know. Um, because I, I just thought I was going crazy. Wow, you know, I've got nothing to be upset about here. I've got everything I've ever wanted. Why am I waking up feeling so low and so depressed? And why am I having these panic attacks? So I struggled and struggled for a, for a few months and until the end, uh, I, I, I asked for help. And um, I wasn't asking for help because I thought I thought it was at the time you know, I felt like it would be weak of me or I'd failed, um, a bit of embarrassed as well. And, uh, you know, it was really all these feelings I was getting. And, and I realise now that to ask for help is actually a strength, you know. So um, I'm glad I did. And what happened was I spoke to a therapist and they sat me down and explained what was actually happening in my head. Um, that yeah. was chemical imbalance and you know after I'd done all these shows and all these highs and big highs you know it was like a, you know there was a kind of crash and you know and I was drinking quite a bit at the time as well I think that kind of helped mass stuff which wasn't great so you know I, I but as soon as as soon as um you know my therapist explained this to me and I said ah oh, right there's a reason and I'm not going crazy it kind of gave me that little glimmer of hope and then you know over the next kind of couple of years I kind of went to up and up it was very very slow and gradual but I got better to the point now where I can come here and talk about this to you because I know yep. it's never going to happen to me Brilliant. again and, and and in fact you know I've helped people over the years that I've just seen something Are you all right mate you know and we've had a chat and they've opened up and I've helped them overcome it and I just said to myself this year you know I want to I want to help more people this year and I think if I can do that to share you know a bit of about that, I think it's a, it, see, it could help people, you know. See, I love that, Christian, because um, I went through a similar journey and I, in my previous business, I suffered some, you know, some mental health issues and depression. And, you know, I went and seen a therapist myself and I've, you know, I've spoke about this on podcast before is when someone, you know, sat me down and the therapist sat me down and said and explained that, what I was trying to do is I was living my life on how my business was performing. I seen my sole purpose as my business. And then the therapist sat me down and said, look, Dave, you're living your life here 
on whether your business performs, whether it doesn't perform, whether it does well, you've got other things going on in your life. And, you know, there's a chemical imbalance and, you know, we can sort them things out, but you're trying to worry about things what haven't even happened yet. The anxiety is coming on. What if, and you're not living in the present and you're worrying about things that you don't have a control over. It was a gradual slow process for myself. And I think now I recognize the signs if I'm feeling a little bit low. I have different routines now that I'm able to do to keep myself um, mentally strong. And I wouldn't advise anyone, I, you know, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy to go through it. But I think when you've been through it, it gives you a stronger presence to deal with things moving forward and to be able to help people. Just about, out of curiosity, when you started to, to go through the anxiety, how was the band? Had you broke up? Had were you still had performing high, or where where were you at in your life when when these kind of came crashing down? Yeah, no, I, we were still performing. I was I was on. I remember having a panic attack on live TV. I was doing an, an interview, and it was just you know heart racing. I mean, you wouldn't know, and I kind of um, got through it. Uh, I would have them on stage. Uh, it, it was pretty crippling. It was really bad, you know, and I, I, I was, wasn't in control and it was starting to get worse. And I'd just seen no, I couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. And that was what was really scary for me. But, um, you know, like, like I said, as soon as somebody explained it to me, and, and it, there is light at the tunnel, it won't last forever. It's just a thing and it'll, you know, it will go. And I just want people to know that it does end and you yeah. can fix these things. And it's okay to ask for help. Absolutely. It's a strength. It's actually a strength to go and ask for help. So just do that. If you, if anyone is listening and you have a, anything like that, you know, I think it needs to be talked about more. I think the music industry needs to pay, make artists more aware. You know, at the time there was no real help for me as an artist. There was no like, Hey, if you do feel a bit funny, you know, there's some resources here or here. There was nothing like that. You know, we were just propelled into this massive, um, kind of um new world and you know my brain was just a little bit overwhelmed I suppose so yeah I just think you know just speak talk to somebody um and you know it, things will absolutely get better um but you're not alone you're not alone and there are people out there to help absolutely so great so during your your, your band's break where did you then where did you then reinvent yourself? Where did you go from, from the band having a break, a 15 year break? What path did you then put yourself on then, Christian? Yeah, well, I was kind of like, you know, I'd, I'd, we split up 2003 and a, a couple of years kind of, you know, to kind of sort my head out and stuff. And, and, and it started to, like I said, it was getting better. We got really better then. And then after a couple of years, I was, you know, I was doing great and I was feeling Right. I was like, right, what do I do now? OK, so um, I, I thought, right, get back in the studio, started writing songs. And um, I started writing this, this new style of music, which was more like rock with synthesizers. It was kind of like I'd heard the killers, this killer song called Somebody Told Me. And I was really yeah. fell in love with it. And I thought, it's a great song. I, I love this song. I love that kind of rock edge, but with synths, still pop, great songs. So I started kind of messing around with new stuff. And I was writing some great stuff and um, I uh, decided instead of coming out with me as Christian Burns, I called myself a new band name and I was sending stuff off to labels and they were like, this is amazing. This is so good. Right. Let's have another chat. And as soon as I told them I was in BB Mac, uh, they were like, oh, it's, it's not right for the label because what it was, there was a backlash. We were, we were seen as like a boy band, but we, I mean, yeah. we wrote, we wrote all our own songs. We didn't dance. We, we you know, we played live and we, we, we produced as well. So we were just a, a band, but uh, you know, we got, we got labeled into, you know, we got thrown in that kind of uh, box as a, as a boy band. So some of the cooler labels that I was sending music off to, and they were like, yeah, it's amazing. This is incredible. We definitely want to talk to you. As soon as they find out there, you know, maybe it wasn't cool enough for them. So I was like, oh, this is, this is, a, this is tough. <laughs> I'm struggling here. I'm struggling to get arrested. So I was like, right, okay. So I just, I went down the route then of like, it was my space at the time. There was only my space. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, you know, this is not going to stop me from doing what I want to do. So I just started to be more present on social media at the time, which was my space. It was the only thing you had. And you could put songs up there. And I just put myself out there. You know, I, I, I knew there were opportunities and I thought, I'm just going to, 
go with this on my own for now and figure the rest will, you know, I'll figure it out. And anyway, I got, I got a message from a guy called Tiesto and he's like, hey, Christian, I uh, just heard your songs on MySpace and uh, I like that one song. Um, can I can I do it for my album? And I was like, hey, Tiesto, uh, thanks, mate. Glad you like it. But no, that's for me. That's mine. That's my song. <laughs> I didn't know Tiesto. I hadn't heard of him and I wasn't, yeah. you know, in the dance world. So uh, a few days later, there was a something came through the mail and it was a DVD off of a guy called Arnie Bink um, at Tiesto's label. And I put this DVD on. And it was Tiesto performing in a stadium with about tens of thousands 70, of people. people around him. He's yeah. in this DJ booth with lights and he's like dangling. Yeah. I don't I was just like, ooh, okay. Hey Tiesto, uh, how are you, mate? Hope you're well. <laughs> so I was straight back <laughs> on there. And I was like, I, I was I was actually blown away by what he'd achieved there. Cause I didn't know this was going on in the dance world. I just thought it was like kind of underground and you know, a small underground scene. I didn't realize the magnitude of what was going on in the electronic world, because this was really before the time of Facebook and everything else. So there were some was massive really... dance festivals as well. I mean, I was in, you know, used to go to the dance festivals probably back in four, three, four, five, six. And there's some massive dance festivals, Armin Van Buren, Tiesto, you know, filling thousands like, a, you know, like Glastonbury for dance, really. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I emailed him back, um, I messaged him back on MySpace and said, you've absolutely blown me, away, blown me away with what you've achieved. And this is incredible to bring that, um, that many people together and seeing them having this incredible time. And, you know, and I love the music as well. So I said, listen, what I'll do, you can't have that song because it's, it's mine. I'm using it for my album. Um, and I said, but I'll write a song with you. I'd love to write a song with you. I said, it's something completely new for me. Um, I'll be honest, but I think I can do it. So send me some music and we'll get cracking. Anyway, he sent me this this lovely track. It was just piano at the time, just a piano track. And I wrote this song called In the Dark, which went on to be a massive, massive hit um, for, for us. And, you know, it was number one in many countries. The album went on to get nominated for a Grammy. Um, it was the lead singer off, off the album. And it just really started my whole journey um, in the electronic world, and 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 I, this was nothing to do with BB Mac, nothing. I just created this from the ground up, so it was kind of I had to reinvent myself from scratch, start again, you know. And I look back now, and I've had you know a, a brilliant career in that in that genre. You know, I'm blessed to have worked with some these great great musicians like BT and Army Van Buren, and Benny Benassi, Paul Van Dyke, Paul Van Paul Oakenfo, all all these great guys. And I, I just really enjoy it. It's um, it's 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 magical for me, you know. And I, you know, I'm working my my next album's going to be out sometime this spring. Um, Love songs from suburbia, um, and that's you know, it's my kind of. It's a bit deeper, but it's electronic music. So I, I just I'm hooked on to dance music now and electronic music. I, I absolutely love it. And I think to be honest, dance music is making a bit of a comeback as well in terms of it's getting bigger and bigger and. Um, you know, it's just a shame in the, the pandemic we're locked down and nobody's going anywhere. But I, I definitely think it was big in the early noughties, if you like. But and I definitely think dance music's making a comeback and the whole DJ scene. And I think more DJs are now collaborating with big stars, aren't they? Like you'll see a DJ collaborate with an Ed Sheeran or with a with a pop star and, and kind of make the music that way as well. So I think there's more more crossover Absolutely. certainly starting to happen. Um, Absolutely, it's massive and it's just getting bigger. The whole electronic community is just growing and growing. Um, and yeah, there's big things coming, definitely. And if, when we when, when when lockdown's over, you know, there's going to be an abundance of shows and gigs, and everyone's going to, you know, I think we're all we all took all these gigs for granted. I know I did, you know, and now we'll, I think we'll really treasure them. Oh, me and my wife say it all the time. We just can't wait till lockdown's over. The yeah. world goes back to normal and we can go and see it. There's nothing better than going to see a band and songs that remind you of times when you went to see them or things that have happened. It, you know, the bands, I feel for them right now, but they really will do well when when we're allowed to to go back to normal. Um, i ask you a question there. If you could give your younger self a bit of advice, what would you what would you say to your younger self? Um, do you know what? I think one bit of advice I'd give, I mean, it's a bit deep um, and, and maybe my younger self would just not listen to me. <laughs> but I think, you know, a real powerful thing for me now is, is just to be a bit more present, to be aware 
and to be aware if you're, you know, feeling negative or anything, you know, this is all goes back to years ago when I had this time and, and how I got through this and how now I, you know, listen, that life is life and life is hard sometimes. I'm not saying it's all, you know, puppy dogs and, and, and flower beds, but just to be aware and be kind to yourself, always be kind to yourself and, you know, just um, don't worry about anything really because, you know, really, is it, is it a, when you've got something going on, is it a real problem or is it something that's, you know, first world problem? So you know, not to worry and not to worry too much about things and just try and be more aware. Yeah, great, great advice there. And what would you say your biggest win was in your career? What's your biggest high where, where you can say that's up there with the best of them? Oh, I mean, I think, I guess it's just, um, there's been so many. Um, it's actually been amazing recent times. To, I've just launched an academy, um, um, Record Ready Academy, which I've just started in December. And for the first time, I've never, I've never done any teaching ever before in my life. <laughs> I've never done anything like that. And it's something new for me, but I like doing things outside my comfort zone. So, I mean, recently it's been amazing. I've been getting my first kind of, bunch of people through the course and you know i'm like i've, I've put 20 years of, of all my knowledge in there and um, so what is the academy explain it for for us listeners and for the for the people out there maybe watching on the youtube channel what is the what's the academy what's it about where did the idea come from yeah well it's called the record ready academy and my first online course is called record ready vocals and this course teaches you no matter what level, you know, whereabouts you are in your musical journey, if you're a beginner or if you're an experienced producer, it teaches you how to record and arrange vocals to a professional standard um, to do everything yourself, uh, whether you're in a studio or at your, if you're at home. Um, I, I was getting a lot of messages from people um, I, I've had for years, you know, asking me about, about different reverbs and using compression and microphone gear and all this. So you know, I decided to put something together, something together that I would have honestly killed for um, when I was starting out or at any time, really, because it's just the stuff that if you don't know, you don't know. You know, I've, I'm lucky to have worked in a studio with amazing producers like Alan Mulder and, you know, Rob Cavallo and Alan Sides and all these incredible legendary producers. Um, so I, I, I've been able to sit there and watch and learn from, from the best in the world. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've kind of my own methods as well. And I've kind of Frankenstein my whole system together was now, you know, I have this great system where I can produce amazing vocals with ease. And I just wanted to share this because I know a lot of people need this kind of thing at the moment. People are stuck at home and it's really about empowering artists. You know, I spoke before about this. It's an exciting time for independent artists and it really mm -hmm. is. And not just on a, a marketing side, but also on a creation side, you know, you can, you can empower yourself. You can take, you can learn these new skill sets now and can give you um, the tools that will last you a lifetime and, and you can then create your own music to a really, really high standard. And um, I guess a lot of it comes from when I, I've been forced in the past to record my own vocals, you know, I'd be on a tour bus or I'd be in a hotel room in Japan and I've got to do a vocal. So I would like make a temporary vocal booth out of two microphone stands and a duvet. <laughs> And I'm there, oh, literally in a microphone, my headphones and my laptop and I'd be, you know, and no one would know. And I'm recording like vocals for, you know, for records, you know. So it's like, you know, you can do it. And um, I just wanted to give something back. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd learned all this stuff for the, for over the years. And, and, and now getting back to your question before, what's your great success? I've been this, getting this amazing feeling. Uh, having the people go through the course now and seeing the absolute joy on the faces saying Christian thank you very much because I've you know I've definitely saved them many years of struggle by doing this and and you know I've really missed that feeling of performing and giving the crowd back and you know and the energy of the crowd and this for me has kind of filled that hole for me that craving because I'm yeah. now getting the students coming back to me and you know they've given me these wonderful testimonials and it's for me it's quite emotional I'll be honest with you because you know, I've put this course together. I'm like, I hope people can understand it properly. I hope, you know, I hope it works and it works for me. And, you know, I've put, I've put so much work and, and, and effort into it. So that's been a really great feeling for me, an unexpected feeling. I didn't realize I was going to get that feeling. 
Um, do you but think it's, been it's really because, rewarding. Yeah. Do you think it's because there's a fulfillment side of it? You're seeing people go from one level to the next level. And they're at like a fan is a great feeling because you know a crowd is singing your song back, or you know, they're over the moon to see you, but in an in that moment they come and go where you're changing somebody's life or especially in this industry for the better. So they're they're able to take your advice, your training and implement it to help them. So the feedback is, and the connection is probably a much deep and more meaningful connection than making with you and your training than just you stood on stage singing their favorite song. Yeah, I think you've spot on. It is a real deeper connection, you know, and I talk to my students and we have this relationship and it's just really rewarding for me. And I'm seeing, I'm hearing the, the greatness they're coming out with now. And I'm like, wow, this is really, I'm, I'm impressed myself here. And I'm just, it just, I just see the happiness on the faces and it's genuine. And, you know, and for me, it's a win-win, you know I mean? It's a, it's that feedback loop and it's just a positive thing. And I, I'm, you know, I'm inspiring a lot of people as well. It's not just to teach them the technicalities. It's giving them confidence. I'm having people saying my confidence has gone through the roof now because before, you know, they didn't know how to do things. And, you know, it wears down on you and you just think, feel a bit imposter. Um, I can't be, you know, shouldn't yeah. be doing this. And to be honest with you, it, it is, it, vocals, you can very easily ruin a vocal, very easily, you know. And, and when you don't know how to do these properly, um, it, it's hard. So it's just, it's like you say, it's just getting that feedback off them. And it was totally, I, you know, it was totally unexpected. And I got this feeling and I was like, wow, this is great. You know, I'm helping people on, on another level here, you know not just playing my music, but helping them make their own music. Um, so yeah, it's win-win. And, where, um, where do you see this to... going now? Where do you see this kind of, because this is probably more a now an entrepreneurial business journey you're on. And, you know, you've went from musician to star to then, you know, back, you're all, you're back in the studio and you're recording an album and you're back with the band, but now you're actually on this entrepreneurial journey where there's new skills to learn. There's marketing, your, your own business, if you like. And how have you transferred over some of the skills? What do you, what do you think the skills you've learned now to be able to market your new business? Absolutely. Well, you know, when I, I started uh, looking around at things, um, you know, I, I think one of the things for me is like the music industry, the, the current system, the current way it, it, it's broken. You know, it's like if you're just relying on putting your music out and, and earning revenue off your streams, it, it's, it's a bit broken. And, you know, we, everyone's trying to sort that out. So I was looking for other ways to kind of, you know, go around that, right, okay, um, figure out other ways for artists to make money. So I started sniffing around at that first. And then I started to see people, you know, doing like teaching on, on Patreon and um, stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, I mean, this is helping people and people can get this advice because I wanted to look at stuff like funnels and all that stuff. Now, as a musician, you know, musicians aren't very good at marketing, I'll be honest, though, or good at social media, yeah. you know, it's like, they just, I just want to make music, I want to create, you know, and that's it, you know, you show them something about, hey, look at these funnels, like, all right, I'll write a song called Funnels, like, you know, it's just like, right, yeah. you know, you've got to think of it differently, <clears throat> so I saw, I saw all this stuff, and it blew my mind, and I'll be honest with you, when I started to look around all that stuff, I just scraped on the thing, and I, I fell into a wormhole, and I'm still studying the art of creating content, you know, Facebook marketing, uh, advertising, funnels, list building. I'm still studying it, you know, and it's, there's so much to learn, but it's fascinating. And I think I just attack it like with the same way as I do when I'm writing a song. Uh, I get stuck when I'm writing a song and I just, you know, I step away and I come back and then I fix it, yeah. you know? And that's the what you know, an entrepreneur is, is, is basically a problem solve, a solver. You know, you get, you're on your journey, you're doing it yourself, you go down a route, this doesn't work, right, try this, this doesn't work, right, try that, ah, that works, right, on to the next point, right, we'll, we'll do yeah. this bit. And you just keep going along and you keep knocking these obstacles down, you keep finding solutions, you know, and there are solutions out for everything, I believe that. So I think it's a, a lot to do with me and my mindset, um, but I do treat it the same way as I treat a song, you know, I just come back and keep coming back and I think it's that resilience that maybe the music industry has taught me um that i carry with me and you know um that that rhinoceros skin 
I've got, you know, yeah. from, you know, from being in the music industry for 20 years and, and just being like, yeah, I, I know that there's, there's a way to make this work. There's a way to make everything work. You've just got to put the work in and you've just got to solve, make, you know, solve some problems. And it's brilliant. And I think, you know, from your history in the music industry to where you are now creating courses and content and, and, and this especially course on helping them, you're, you've, you're an established, um, you're an established authority in the music industry and you've done this, you've practiced this, you've, you've, you've developed this and now you're giving back and, uh, and I've, I, you know, I've never seen anything like this in terms of the courses out there. And I think you'll do very, very well in your marketing, your funnels and you're building your email list and, you know, creating content across social media regarding this. It's only going to get better. What, where, where do you see yourself? What's your targets for the next kind of, one year, two year, three year, where do you see yourself going in the next three year? Yeah, I mean, absolutely lots more music to come. You know, I'm an artist um, at heart, I'm a musician, that's it, you know. Um, so I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out a way to mix them all together. So I am, you know, I'm writing new albums, but the songs are featuring in my courses. So I'm, I am working on another course called Record Ready Songs, which is a, a songwriting um, course, um, which I'm working on at the moment, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I plan on putting more stuff under the Record Ready Academy umbrella, and um, yeah, me and BT also, my my longtime bandmate with All Hail of Silence, and you know, collaborator and one of my dearest friends with Brian Transo, um, we're working on some really amazing stuff for this year. So we're launching our own record label as well called Cassette Recordings. Um, it's spelled K-S-S-3-T-E. Um, so we're launching that and we've already signed about 10 artists and we're developing them as well. So we're working on some we're working on some pretty big stuff this year that's really, really gonna help the electronic music community as well. So we we plan on giving back this year as well, me and BT. Um, and we've got some cool stuff planned as well. So yeah, I mean I I, I do obviously I don't really plan that far into the future, um, but I do, I will plan for the end of the year and I will have lots of short term goals to hit first before I can get to that point. So, you know, um, what, what do you think the importance are of the short term goals? Um, Cause you know, everyone sets them new year's resolution or the next 12 months, the three year plan, the five year plan. But why do you think it's important to, sh to set the short term goals as well for yourself? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's great saying, hey, I'm going to have a yacht by next Christmas or I'm going to move to New Zealand and build my own chateau or whatever you want to do. Um, you know, it's it you, to get to that point, you know, you've got to tick these small term goals. And I think it's just having something that's achievable, because once you achieve that and you tick it off, it gives you that feeling of like accomplishment, which then gives you a bit of a dopamine rush and makes you feel I've done that, you know, I'm, I'm making progress. Whereas if you're just paddling around, panicking, trying to get this thing and you never really, you never get there because you're trying to do all these things, you know, it's just, it can be a bit disheartening and overwhelming. So I think it's really, really important to have, you know, some small term goals, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that, that's how, that's how my mind works anyway. You know, I have these, these really believable achievable goals and you get you get you know it's the little things that make the big things happen i really believe that it is and and that is a good bit of advice there and uh, a book i'm reading at the moment is uh the matthew mcconaughey the green lights book and if you haven't read it i advise you to get it and read it it, it is a really good book and and one thing he does say and one thing i've, I've heard him say is every day he writes down a to-do list of things and goals he wants to achieve and that's even as such as getting out of bed, getting ready, you know, take, he even says taking a shit, I put down on there. He <laughs> says, he says, cause the more you tick off, the more you feel that you've achieved things that day. And he says, it's stupid. He says, every little thing I write down and I tick it off. He says, cause when you're ticking these things off, you feel better about yourself. And I sometimes, I think that's a great bit of advice, Christian is, you 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 achieve short-term goals that keeps you motivated, keeps you going. Because if I just said to you, your goal is to release a number one record in three years' time, well, chances are you'll just lose sight of that three-year goal where if you break it down into short chunks and, and smaller and weekly and monthly and daily goals, then when you start ticking them off, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you going. So I think that's a, no, that's a great bit absolutely. of advice for 
for any entrepreneur there. Um, I'm asking all me guests this question, and I'm interested to hear yours is, what are you doing now that your future self will thank you for? Um, what am I doing now? Right, okay, yes. Um, I'm reading a lot of books at the minute. I've got, I've got my, uh, I've got, um, you know, a, a, um, a new thing where I kind of speed it up on audiobooks so you can listen to it at 1.5. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing these things. I call them knowledge baths and I go in the bath and I sit there every day for like an hour and I put an audio book on and I think definitely my future self is going to thank me for, for doing this. And, and what kind of books are you way. reading? What, what you're interested in at the moment? What's, what's your kind of top three or your, your favorite book of the last kind of couple of months? Yeah, I mean, a few. There's, there's some, you know, I'm, I'm reading a great one called the, the Power of the Subconscious Mind, which is a great book. You should check it out. Um, quite a few. Um, you know, going on Clubhouse is incredible because you go on Clubhouse and uh, I know we've not really spoke about that, but, you know, people are always recommending great books. So I'm always in there writing these books down, putting them on my list. Um, but a great book I, I read recently, which really spoke to me, you know, I think some books talk to you more than others. And this one really yeah, did. Do. And it was... Um, it's by Mark Manson. It was called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> um, so so um, I got this book and um, I read it and it just kind of uh, said the right things to me. And it really helped me kind of just uh, in a reset kind of way of looking at things from the outside looking in. It was a really great book and it kind of spurred me on to change a few things in my own life and in my, you know, career wise and kind of, start to be open to pivot pivoting more so it was it was a really great book i really highly recommend that um for anyone out there who's feeling a bit if you're feeling a bit flat a bit stuck and you're after a bit of inspiration or something like a big wet fish across the face to kind of wake you up that's a great book to do there was a I was on a call with a with a guy called Mark Elliott. He's a he's a a, a coach and a um probably a bit of a life coach as well um last week and one thing he does with his books which is interesting is he reads a book then writes notes in a little mini book on the top tips he's taken away from that book because i think when people read a book they instantly think right i've read this this 600 page novel i've got to take everything away from it where you don't unless a book really speaks to you like this this um the art of not giving a fuck really speaks to you then you might take one or two things or three things away from the book and he writes a little mini book from the books he's read one it, it definitely um embeds learning from what you've took from the book because yeah. you have to write something about it and two rather than going back through the book you just go through your little mini book and go actually that was a great point that was a great point because yeah chances are you might read you might read a book and only take five things away from it you might take one thing away from it but it's that one thing you take away that you're going to embed and use in your life so i, I definitely think the more you read and it, it, it really does help your future self um mold and change and you know Consume more of what you're interested in. Yeah, what um, I do another another thing similar to what what your friend does there is I will um, use a highlighter and I will highlight. If there's a line that really sticks out for me, I'll highlight the line. But then when I go back, I go to the book and I'll flick through and I'll read the whole paragraph around that line. Then again, so I'll scan it again, maybe a couple of years later, and go through. Yeah, and I can do that. Um, but I've, I've got to say, I've been getting into these audio books and just getting them on super fast and getting them yeah. like a, you know, short circuit. More input, Stephanie, more input. I was just like taking it all in, <laughs> um, but it's great. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I've got a bit of a problem, I think. <laughs> good problem, it's a good problem. <laughs> yeah. So that brings on our final thing, Clubhouse. What got you into it? What do you make of it? Where do you think it's going? What are you using it for? Clubhouse, wow. Well, it, this was something that took me by absolute surprise, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, you know, the fact that me and you are here now having this chat is incredible. You know, we didn't yeah. know each other before Clubhouse. No, we we met on there and now we're, you know, we're having this, this great conversation. Um, so that's the power of Clubhouse right there. But I didn't quite know what it was really. It, you know, it's a social media platform with no text, no pictures, no video. Uh, and you're like, wow, okay. So it, it just relies on the human voice. And yeah, I, I'm pretty blown away by it. I think I've been on there now for, well, I think probably about a month. And at first I didn't know what I was doing. I was just on there popping into all kinds of rooms and stuff. But now 
you know, I'm, I'm using this um, platform to help people and I'm going on the nearly every night. Um, I go in these songwriting rooms and me and my friend BT, we have a club called Make Better Music. And we just go on there and we're giving out tips and we're talking about new software and plugins. And we're finding our tribe of people and we're all having these great geeky geek out conversations. And, you know, we get some amazing people up there and some really sad stories as well. And we try and help as many people as we can. And it's just been a really great platform to start to help connecting. And I'm, what I'm really excited about um, with Clubhouse is is the cross pollination between different industries. You know, you've got musicians yeah. working with Mark, talk to marketers on there. Let's fuse these, fuse these guys together, you know, and these marketing people can help these musicians and, and, and pair, the, pair you up with filmmakers and, you know, with actors and actresses. And, you know, I just think it's a great platform to kind of... Well, it is. And, and everyone's accessible. I mean, I was in a room on Saturday morning with Tyrese Gibson from the Fast and the Furious films, you know, megastar, yeah. you know, multi, multi millionaire. And you're in there talking to him, asking him a question on marketing. He's a business owner as well. You know, then there's Paris Hilton comes into one room, which yeah. you just think, wow. But she's got multiple businesses. So she's adding value, not from just a social media perspective, but from her businesses that she invests in and grows. And then you've got, you know, people like me and you in there trying to just build our way and find our way and find our audience. And you're right, there's a room there's a room for everything in there. There's some mad, crazy rooms, don't get me wrong. And some of the late night yeah. Americans are just like off the charts, you know, talking about all sorts, which is from a British thing. It's not really our thing, but I get them. But there is a space for everything. And for you, for what you've developed in this, this, these courses, that app there is perfect for you. And, you know, you've got, you've got singers, you've got the game, you've got artists, rap stars, you've got, um, just such a massive cross section of artists that are still out there killing it right now as well. So, and they're in there giving back and in there for business rooms and different things. So it is, it's, it's taken from like a live podcasting experience. That's where it's taken, but it yeah. is just a, it's a very addictive platform right now. You get on there and you find yourself hours and you're sitting in rooms. And some of the smaller rooms, you know, the 50, 60 people where you're having conversations with people and you're learning and you're learning about funnels and marketing and, and uh, um, you know, learning how to get people into your funnel and build your, build your, um, your, your marketing database. And it's just a, it's a, it's something I've never, oh, mind blown. Exactly right. It's mind blown. It's something I've never experienced, but because we've been locked down, especially in the UK for, for such a long time, especially in the Northeast, you know, we've been locked down here for, for God knows how long, really. We've never been out for a meal since September time. People are craving a deeper connection. And I think when you're chatting to someone in a room and you're building that connection, it's not like, oh, I've just followed Chris, you know, Dave's just followed Christian on, um, on Instagram and I'm looking at your pictures and you might like some of mine and I might like some of yours. We don't really know each other. We're on clubhouse. We're able to talk, chat, find a little bit about more about you. And because it's just audio only, you build a deeper connection with someone and you build a yep. stronger connection and you're more likely to uh, recommend someone. So it'd be interesting to see where it goes across the coming months because the more it opens up, I think there was, you know, a couple of hundred thousand. I think now there's like 1.5 million people are using it, which yeah. still compared to that hundreds of millions of people on Instagram, it's only scratching the surface. So it's only just going to go one way really, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a really powerful platform. Uh, I think if you go on there and you go on there with, with, you know, just be your authentic self. I mean, that's the great thing about it. There's no scripts. There's nowhere to hide. Oh. You've just got to be yourself, you know what I mean? And just go on there and do good, you know, use the internet yeah. for good. There's lots of people out there need help. And, you know, I'm directing people to like, hey, go and read this book or go and try this little trick on your next song, whatever. And, and they're loving it, you know what I mean? And it's stuff that I can gladly just give out there Brilliant. And just, if it helps, helps people. So it, it's a great platform, mate. And I think people have been craving that deeper connection, you know, and that's what yeah. it is. It's, 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 it's instant. And, um, you know, it's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm loving it. You know, I'm trying to ration myself, you know, and not be like on yeah, there all day. Yeah, I've got that. songs to write and I've got courses to create, um, yep. you know, and students to teach. So, I'm trying not to be on there all the time, but I am going on there most nights, uh, you know, in some of the songwriting rooms and, 
and like I say, you know, Brilliant. a couple three times a week, me and BTT will go on there. One one more question I've got for you before we go um, is if you could spend an hour with three people, anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would you spend that hour with and why? Ooh, okay. Um, I'd have to say two of them. I'd have to say um, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. And I don't think I have to say why. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I mean, on a, on a creative, uh, I mean, you know, as a songwriter and a musician, those guys, for me, you know, I've just cherished every song they've ever written. And, you know, I'd just like to just spend some time with them and, and just ask them, you know, all kinds of questions about everything to do with music. So, um, yeah. And who else would I like to spend time with? Um, that's a really good one. I'd have to say... Um, 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 oh, I think, I think, yeah, Ricky Gervais. I'd have to, yeah. I'd have to say yeah. Ricky Gervais. That'd be an odd, an odd dinner party. Me, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Ricky Gervais. I think it'd be an odd <laughs> dinner party, but I think it'd be quite entertaining. And I just like his take on everything in the world. I like what he's about. I think he's a very funny mm. man. And uh, but you know, on a on a deeper level with with Ricky, I think just he's. I, I would just like to have some real deep conversations with him um, about the world and and about everything else. So I think yeah. Um, and you can come and come if you want. We can all have dinner Brilliant. together if you want. Yeah. Well. Christian, I've loved the podcast. I've loved a deep dive into your career, the, your highs and your lows and your, your mental health battles and, and where you are now and what you're trying to do for the industry. And I, you know, I look forward to hearing in more of your clubhouse rooms as well. So um, I'd just like to thank you for coming on the podcast. I think you'd be a great it'd be a great episode for people in the music industry or want to get in or wanting to develop their music industry um music industry um background and um, if anyone wants to find you if anyone wants to follow you where can they find you where where will they find your details yes they can follow you can follow me on instagram it's christian burns underscore um you can head to christianburns.com or um i'm on twitter and facebook and all those things uh if you want to check out record ready vocals you can go to uh, recordreadyacademy.com and um Brilliant. yeah that's it Excellent. Well, thanks very much and we shall speak again.